Freshwater fish come in so many colors. You got your reds, blues, yellows, but certain colors are super rare. So after scouring my local fish stores for months on end, I finally put together my top five list of green fish that stay three inches or smaller. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And back when I was a beginner, I wanted to set up a really cool rainbow tank where I had fish of every single color, right? Well, I still have all my original research, so I figured I'd share it with you and save you a bunch of time because looking for green was quite the doozy. First up on our list is the neon green rasbor or kubutai rasbor. This is, I mean, it looks like your typical little rasbor or tetra, but it's bright lime green and like amazing looking. And this is amazingly enough, it is not dyed or genetically modified. This is a completely natural fish you can find in the wild. They come from Thailand and Myanmar. This micro raspora is less than an inch long, so because they're so tiny, they're constantly worried about predators. You wanna get a larger school of them, maybe at least eight to 10 of them, the more the merrier. Because they are such tiny fish, they have tiny mouths and they need to eat tiny foods. So I like to feed them crushed up flakes, baby brine shrimp, um, frozen Daphnia and Cyclops, as well as one of my favorites is this easy fry and small fish food. I love the squeeze bottle that makes it really convenient and fast to feed. Because they are that bright lime green color, I probably wouldn't plant a lot of like bright yellow green plants like this Pogo Simmons Stellatus octopus, but instead go with you know a darker substrate, black background, and then dark green or even red plants to really make them pop. Next up on the list is the emerald green Corydoras, which is a larger cory catfish. I say they get about three inches, maybe a little more, a little less, but very, very popular. You'll probably find them in your Petco, PetSmart, any kind of big pet store chain because they have this amazing metallic green body with kind of a bluish tinge to it. Very unusual. Their care requirements are very similar to most quarries. They can survive in a wide range of temperatures, pH. I would just get a school of at least three to six of them because it can be a little timid if you just get one. This bottom dweller is often used as a cleanup crew member because they love to scavenge for leftovers on the bottom of the aquarium, but make sure you specifically feed them food too. They generally will are not picky eaters, very beginner friendly. They will eat anything that pretty much sinks to the ground. So things like sinking pellets and wafers, frozen blood worms, tube effects worms, things like that. In fact, if you feed them really well and keep up with your water changes, they're relatively easy to breed. I actually have a whole video over here on how I bred my Cory catfish in the past. I think Emerald Corydoras are about five to $10 each right now, but if you got a lot of money to spend and you're looking for something super rare, check out the Green Laser Corydoras. That is, I think about 30 to $40 right now. And they have kind of a dark green to black body with a narrow horizontal bright yellow green stripe on each side of their dorsal fin. Very cool looking, but very rare. I think I've only seen them once in a local fish store. Number three on the list are Endler's Live Bears. So if you're not familiar with them, they are like the smaller, sleeker version of their cousins, the guppies. I mean, still very colorful and active, but I've seen that the wild, like original wild types of Endler's Live Bears, they often have a little patch of green on them. So people ended up live bre uh, line breeding them so that they could increase that green to most of the rest of the body. And then you get variants like the lime green Endler and the green laser Endler, which is what I ended up getting. This is such a lively and fun fish that you can add to your community tank. They are peaceful. They're also not picky eaters, really easy to pretty much give them any kind of small community fish food. And then finally, they are super easy to breed. Like they'll breed like rabbits. And so if you're looking for a fun project and you love seeing those little baby fish pop out, this is a great fish to try. I would recommend getting like one male to every two to three females, even though the females are a little drabber in color, just because it gives the girls a little break from being chased by the guys all the time. They live in your typical tropical temperatures, but they do prefer slightly higher pH as well as harder water with more minerals in it. So if you're like me and you have tap water with really low GH, I would highly recommend that you add something like Wonder Shell or Seachem Equilibrium just to make sure that they have all the minerals they need to stay healthy and happy. 
Number four on the list, you may or may not have heard of, it is the green fire tetra. So basically imagine a tetra with kind of a light green body, and then they have a red, bright red region in their lower flanks and tail. So kind of like a neon tetra, but replace the blue and silver parts with green. Very pretty, and the males often have white tips to their fins and tail. They get about one and a half inches long, so similar to the green neon raspora, they're gonna want to eat smaller foods. Not picky at all though, so throw you know crushed flakes, the baby brine shrimp, daphnia, that kind of thing at them. Like most tetras, they're gonna do best in a school of six to eight individuals of the same species. However, I did read on some sites that they mentioned that the green um, fire tetras can be a little curious and sometimes like to nip at the uh, long finned fish like angelfish and bettas. So comment down below if you have ever kept green fire tetras and observed this behavior. So I'm kind of curious. Number five on the list is the green tiger barb. And this is just a selectively bred color variant of the normal tiger barb. But instead of having those black vertical stripes on them, they kind of have this solid emerald green body with black and orange on their fins. So gorgeous. And then similar to the emerald quarries, that green is more of a, a metallic green with a bluish tint to it. Like the emerald quarries, they get to about three inches or larger. So I would recommend getting them a 30 gallon or larger aquarium for them because they're just such active swimmers and they need a lot of room to move around. They're also kind of the reason why I ended up not being able to call this my top five green fish for nano tanks because they get a little bit bigger. They are considered a semi-aggressive species and are known to be fin nippers. So I would highly recommend that you get six or much, much more of them just because then they can kind of keep each other busy and they won't bother other fish. And uh, there are many, many color variations of tiger barbs. So feel free to mix and match to get that school. In fact, another warning is they're very, very fast eaters. So they're not gonna be picky about what you throw in the tank, but I wouldn't recommend maybe pairing them with slow moving or long finned fish because they're probably gonna outcompete them during meal time. In fact, if you're a beginner, I would just recommend doing a species only tank with just tiger barbs in it, and then put lots of um, kind of fake decorations or live aquarium plants in there. They're kind of taller and can block line of sight so they can run around them and escape from each other if they need to. Because they are that darker emerald green color, I think they would go really well with a brighter yellow green plant, such as, you know, these pogo stem and stellatus. Another great one is bacopa or a red plant like this dwarf aquarium lily in the middle. After doing all that research on green fish, I realized that almost all of them are schooling fish and require at least six or more individuals of the same species. And that means I would need a much larger aquarium to house all of those different colors. And right now I can only take care of nano tanks. However, I think it would still work if I got maybe a school of green fish and then pick some kind of fish that was a complementary color, like a bright red flame dwarf gourami or red epistogramma cichlid. That would be so beautiful. What's your favorite green fish that says three inches or smaller? Let me know down in the comments because I want to help other people that are searching for that perfect green fish. And also, if you've missed my previous top five fish lists that are based on color, you can check them out over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Woohoo! That's a wrap! Now I'm going to go see a movie with Mr. Gamer. Uh, I've heard Pig by Nicolas Cage is really good, so we shall see.